Welcome back to the show that's already had to have a name change. We are going from the first hour, and since we figured out that the first hour already has a game, there's already literally, it's already, there's already a show called The First Hour. So we are changing the show to something called An Hour In. And the idea here is for me to talk about a game that I've played for one hour and give you an idea as to whether or not I'm willing to put another hour in. Today's game, Tekken 7. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this. Um, I'm only an hour in. Keep in mind, every single time we do one of these, this is not necessarily a review. It's an impression of the first hour of gameplay. I used three characters. I got three characters in on this one. I was able to check out um, the Bruce Lee clone, of course. And then I checked out the boxer. And then I checked out the new karate expert. All three of these characters had strengths. All three of these characters had weaknesses. The biggest thing that I can tell you is that the game feels choppy. Um, I'm very used to playing Dead or Alive. It is the fighting game that I... It is the fighting game where I make my home. It is the one that I choose to play. It is the one that I'm most interested in. It's the one that I feel feels more fluid. And then a close second is to play Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur is the other fighting game that really keeps my interest. I feel like these games are fast. They're fluid. They're designed a certain way that makes me feel like a fighter should be done. As aside from 2D fighters, 2D fighters have a very different appeal to me. And we'll talk about those the next time or, or, or another time when we end up doing one of those games. But this game isn't bad. One of the biggest draws for me is that there are a lot of different fighters, a lot of different fighting types that come into this game. And they're represented fairly well. One of the big things that I enjoyed quite a bit was getting into the boxer and seeing how she, seeing how Steve shifts around and moves. I thought that that was pretty cool. Uh, I can't say that I was overly happy about his use in general, but I did have a good time. Uh, the slips and dives and moves were pretty cool. The Bruce Lee clone is definitely the one that I had the most success with. Absolutely, without a doubt, the most success with. I don't know if that just happens to deal with the fact that he's a really good character or if it just happens to deal with the fact that that's the way I fight. I also did like the karate expert and I will, I do actually plan to pump a little more time into her. So to preemptively answer the question, yes, I feel like I would definitely put more time into into this. The first hour went over very well for me. And while I had some snags here and there, the biggest snags happened to be in the way that I felt the game was not as fluid as I felt it could have been. And that's a big deal for somebody like me, because for somebody like me that has played these games for so long, that has played fighting games for so long and has really found an area where he feels comfortable, Dead or Alive is it for me. That is the that is where I feel comfortable. It's where I feel that I have the most control and I have the most fun playing a fighting game. Right after that comes Soul Calibur and right after that comes 2D Fighters for the most part. This game has some things going for it though. Its animations are slick and smooth. It looks absolutely great. And the backgrounds and everything are fairly decent. I never experienced any kind of ring out or anything like that. I never experienced an area where I went through something. That wasn't something that happened for me. I did experience a little bit of controller issue. And the only thing I could put that down to is, like I said, games like this, they tend to feel choppy to me. I don't know why. It's just, it's always like that. Now I'll tell you this, starting the game sucked. Starting the game was the biggest part of this that was a letdown for me. You start the game and it just takes forever. It wants you to be like, are you using a controller? Would you like to set the controller up? Do you want to do this? Do you want to sign these two documents? Do you want to say yes to this? Do you want to do this? Do you want to set these things up? Do you want to do this? Do you want us to activate this free move thing? Do you want us to activate this? Do you want us to fix this? Do you want us to do that? And then at the very end of it, it's like, do you want to take training? And then it takes me into the training and I couldn't figure out how to make the training work. Like I could figure out 
where it was like, hey, let us show you a bunch of stuff, but I couldn't figure out where it would let me learn the game for myself, and that was a big, big pain in the ass. I will also say that I'm noticing that this game does a lot of the same crap that the other fighting games do. You play, you win, you get like you get like the ability to to earn hair pieces and money to buy customization to customize a character and that's primarily what you'll spend 80% of your time doing and so on and so forth and that I can't say is a bad thing but I can't say that I was overly excited about that concept either earning a bunch of titles and stuff like that really doesn't do anything for me and while maybe it balances out the equation online when I go on and I'm like a third Keo or whatever or a fifth Dan and then maybe it locks me up with people that make sense for that kind of thing where they're, they're at that level too. I don't know if that's actually necessarily true because after a while somebody may learn the ins and out of the fighting game and then they may purposely choose a character that they don't use very often, which yes, puts them at a slight disadvantage, but they already understand the way that the game works, so it doesn't exactly link us up perfectly. I don't, I don't know that the online will be as stable as I would like it to be, and quite frankly, I'm not willing to test it either. All in all, a solid game. This review, these type of games, this type of thing, this show is not meant to review the game. It's not meant to say yes or no. It's meant to just simply say what I put more time into it, and I guarantee you that I'll be going back to this game. It does have some strong stuff going for it, as much as it has things that I don't necessarily care for. Worst part about this game, the worst part about it was starting. Just starting. Uh, I, couldn't figure out, I couldn't figure out what it wanted me to do. And then when I finally just said, screw it, and I stopped doing that, and I went down and I clicked the arcade and I just played the arcade, I had a much better time. Much better time. And then I'll say that the best part of playing this game is going to be just discovering characters that I like to use. I don't know how long I will put into this game, in all honesty. It doesn't feel like a game that I'm going to pump a ridiculous amount of time into. It just feels like a decent fighter. And maybe if I find some people that are willing to swap the controller back and forth and or play some versus, that would be really cool for me. Or maybe if I could get online and fight some people that I know are not just going to corner trap or destroy me so badly that I don't even want to play the game, maybe that's a possibility too. There are a couple people on my friends list that I would be willing to try that out with. But as it stands right now, that's pretty much everything that this first hour of gameplay gave me to talk about. So that's an overview of the first hour, and I'm going to get out of here. Actually, wait, no. Wait, no. No, 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 no. Um, there is one more thing. There's one more thing before I... I guess two more things before I hop out of here. Um, so we're not, we're not, you know, signing out yet. Uh, two things. One, Tekken sure has changed. I remember back when I was younger... I remember reading the the advertisement for Tekken, and if I remember right, the one of the one of the advertisements were the pain in your chest is broken ribs, not a fireball. Like that was very much making fun of Street Fighter. That Street Fighter was Hadouken and freaking Sonic Boom and crap like that. And they were like, these are real fighters. These are real people. These are badasses. These people have trained all their life. They're fighters. And I remember some of the people that were backing Tekken at the time, like in, it, it's true that I think things were already changing by Tekken 2 because we got like the devil gin and stuff like that. But like, stop and think about stuff like how different it really is now. Like I'm fighting the end person and she's like jumped out of a volcano and there's like a giant tiger that's fighting alongside of her and she's got devil wings and all this other crap. And I guess it had already changed all the way back in part two, kind of like how people argue that, that, um, over the years, Resident Evil has changed. And I've argued that Resident Evil was an action game back in part two. So maybe I don't have a ground to stand on here, but like, it feels very different when I'm playing this game and She's like shooting lasers and jumping all over the place and flying and doing crazy stuff. And it's just really bizarre to me just how different Tekken really is today as opposed to what it was. And keep in mind, the last time I enjoyed a Tekken, the last time I played, I played Tekken 1, Tekken 2, and Tekken 3 I played a lot. I got into Tekken 4 but never really never really latched onto it. I kind of stopped playing at Tekken 4. Went back for Tekken 5 
because there was a PSP game that was absolutely solid. Then did not play six at all. I had literally zero interest, did not care for either of the two tags. And maybe that's, maybe that's blasphemy, but like my experience with tag was that a friend of mine brought over Tekken tag and rocked me to the point where I stood absolutely no chance. And in this game, if you're good at this game and you're fighting somebody who's never really played Tekken seriously, um, you will rock them. You will rock them so hard and so fast that they won't even know what happened. They don't even have time to understand the controls or why things are choppy the way they are. And there's no chance for them to ever win. And when you get rocked like 12 frickin' rounds in a row and you never stand a single chance and win on the second time you've ever played the game, the tag tournament, you get cradled to death while you are punching. So I throw a punch, he grabs while I'm punching and it count, it combos into the cradle of death and he just rolls me to death in one freaking attack. Yeah, that pretty much ended it for me with Tekken. Was being outclassed that hard did not give me the drive to like play and get better. It gave me the drive to be like, I hate this game. I hate everything about this game. I hate the choppiness and the nature of this game and everything about this game. And we should play Dead or Alive. And quite frankly, um... I've heard where he says things like, yeah, but when I played Dead or Alive and I lost, I didn't cry about it and stop playing for the rest of my life. Um, counter argument to that argument that you made to me years ago. Um, you did stop playing Tekken forever, actually, because later on when you got back into Tekken, you tried to play and they introduced Anubis and you were like, screw this game. I hate this game. I can't stand this game. I don't want shit to do with this game. I can't beat this last guy. This game sure has changed. It's not the game for me. And that was after you started playing Dead or Alive. And when you started playing Dead or Alive, you actually shifted and did not play Tekken at all. You didn't buy the new Tekkens or keep up with Tekken or care about the next Tekken coming out. You played Dead or Alive. So I would argue that I won that argument when I said this game is really stupid, really choppy, and really ignorant, and you're walking all over me and I stand no chance whatsoever. Let's play a different fighting game. And you played Dead or Alive, and when you picked up on it, you never went back to Tekken. So I'm just going to put that out there. It's a damn good system to play Dead or Alive. But another thing that has changed that really confused me that I did not see coming when it comes to this game, I did not see coming for a second, not for one second, the kind of um, a guest characters that would be brought into this game. Now, while I understand guest characters have become kind of a, a thing, and it's almost a thing to have them be weird offshoot characters now, I did not expect that Negan or that Street Fighter would be the guest characters in this game. Like, to see Akuma and know that... I guess they did Street Fighter cross Tekken or whatever, and I guess that makes sense that now, because of that, Street Fighter and Tekken take place in the same universe, but that's bizarre. Because remember, their advertisement was very much the burning in your chest or whatever is not from your... not from a fireball, it's from your broken ribs. Um, Like, that's very... that's a very different step to take to then come back and say Street Fighter is uh it's a shared universe. Street Fighter is here. And it's very much there because you like you fight Akuma and he seems to very much be like part of the storyline as to what's going on. Heck, uh in, in some cases when you get to the end of the game, you either fight the the weird uh demon girl or you fight Akuma. It's just crazy to me how different this game is, how much it has changed. But that that is now I believe everything I have to say on my first hour in Tekken 7. So that's it. That's a f that's that's my f initial impressions at the first hour. So that's an hour in. Now, I'm going to get out of here. I have spoken. Take what you will from it. <laughs>